Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Statistics Solutions webinar. My name is Justin D'Souza. I'm a quantitative specialist here at the company. Today, we will be discussing running and interpreting correlation tests. Uh, if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat box or the Q&A box. And at the end of the webinar today, I'll be doing a Q&A session. Uh, my colleague, Sierra, will be providing some hyperlinks in the chat box as well if you'd like to schedule a free consultation. We'll also send everyone a copy of the webinar and the PowerPoint. All right, so first I'll give an overview of the services we provide at Statistic Solutions. Then we will discuss correlation tests. What types of tests are there? When do you run a specific Pearson correlation or Spearman correlation or a chi-square test? Then I'll give a demonstration in our company software, Intellectus, uh, which will crunch your numbers for you and it provides an APA write-up. And then we'll conclude with a summary and a Q&A session. Here you can see all the different parts of the dissertation or thesis that we assist with. Uh, we help with topic development, going all the way to the end of final defense and everything in between, uh, which consists of prospectus or concept papers, depending on what university you go to. Some universities have a practice, some have a concept paper or a topic paper. Then we help with the proposal chapters, which usually consists of the introduction, the lit review, and the methodology. Uh, so we have quantitative and qualitative specialists at our company, and we have literature review specialists. Uh, so we can help you frame your paper, identify research questions and hypotheses, help to identify your purpose statement and problem statement, figuring out a gap in the literature and identifying a theoretical framework. Then we help with the IRB process if you have any IRB forms. And we help with data entry templates. Sometimes that's a tricky step depending on how you're collecting your data. We can send you an example of how <clears throat> the data needs to be inputted into Excel or SPSS. We have a SurveyMonkey account at our company, so we can help host a survey for you. And we also help with the results chapter, both quantitative and qualitative or mixed methods, depending on what methodology you are proposing. If you do sign on for results chapter assistance, we also provide the SurveyMonkey uploading as well, so we can help host your survey and upload it into the software. Then with the final chapters, we help with the discussion. Uh, which is tying your findings back to previous literature, discussing limitations and recommendations for future research. And then we help with PowerPoints for the proposal and final defense, in addition to journal publications. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can give us a call for a free consultation at 727-442-4290. So today we are discussing correlation tests, how to conduct them, how to interpret them. But first, it's important to understand the difference between parametric techniques and non-parametric techniques. Parametric statistics are based on assumptions about the distribution from which the sample was derived. Um, so usually the primary assumption when you're running parametric analyses is that your data follows a normal distribution. Uh, you need to have ideally a bell-shaped curve when you're running parametric analyses. Um, and usually parametric statistics involve looking at a continuous variable, you know, something like GPA, height, weight, a composite score from a Likert scale survey. Those are continuous variables typically. Non-parametric techniques do not have strict assumptions out your sample and its relation to the population. Um, so you don't necessarily need a normal distribution when you run these tests. And the types of variables you use with non-parametric techniques are usually ordinal or nominal in measurement. Ordinal would be something like education level, you have high school, associates, bachelor's, master's, PhD, or nominal variable like ethnicity, or gender categorical also means nominal. 
Uh, so when you have nominal or ordinal, that usually will fall into the non-parametric technique family. Okay, so say you are testing the relationship between two numeric measurements, okay? For example, is there a significant relationship between the mileage of the car and its horsepower? Um, this would be a situation where you can do a Pearson correlation because mileage and horsepower are continuous measurements. Pearson correlation is always used when you have two interval or continuous or ratio level measurements. The non-parametric alternative, and many statistical analyses have a parametric version, and then there's a non-parametric alternative. Um, so if, for one thing, your data doesn't meet the normal distribution, <clears throat> then you can shift to a non-parametric technique. So the non-parametric alternative to a Pearson correlation is a spearman row correlation or Kendall's tau correlation. This can be used in two different scenarios. One, when your data doesn't follow a normal distribution, but maybe you propose the Pearson correlation and you check for the assumption of normality and it's not supported, then you can shift to a spearman's row. The second example or the second consideration in which you can use a Spearman or Kendall style is when you have at least one ordinal measurement. Okay, so for example, let's, let me show a spreadsheet here that I've kind of organized. This is Intellectus, our company software. So you can upload a data file that is a CSV, an Excel, SPSS, SAS, or Stata. And once you've uploaded it, this is what it looks like. Uh, very much it's similar to SBSS <clears throat> and how it's organized. You have columns are your variables of interest and you have rows are the participants or the units of interest. In this spreadsheet, I have a series of different car models and I have different statistics for each of these models, you know, mileage, uh, the engine type, the transmission type, how many cylinders it has. Um, so if we were doing a Pearson correlation, you would need to have two scale level variables. Scale also means continuous. And you can see all the different data management functions we have on the left here. You can reverse code, you can identify and remove outliers, you can transform the data to a different distribution. And we also have plots here. But this is the, the key portion of the software where you can run analyses and it's going to provide an APA write-up for you, both APA tables and a narrative. Uh, so in this example here in the PowerPoint, if we're looking at the relationship between mileage and horsepower, I just go to analyses here <clears throat> and we're going to go to the correlations family and then we'll select a Pearson correlation. Then you just select your variables of interest. Okay, so let's say mileage and horsepower. And then you can click calculate. Okay, so the first thing it's going to do is give an overview of the correlation and what the interpretations are, what is a small, medium, and large effect. Then it checks for the assumption of normality with a scatter plot or I'm sorry, not normality of linearity with the scatter plot. And then you can see the actual results of the correlation down here. Uh, so there are three things to keep in mind when you look at a correlation. First, you look at the p-value, okay? The p-value tells you, do you have a significant relationship between your two variables of interest? And if you hover your mouse over the terms, it will tell you what they mean. Uh, so the p value, ideally, if it's below 0 0.05, that tells you that we have a significant association between our variables of interest, which we do. This is below 0 0.05. The second thing to look at is the strength of the correlation coefficient, which is the value under R here. <clears throat> and the correlation coefficient can range from negative one to positive one. The closer it is to one, or negative one, the stronger your association. Uh, so you compare this value to the citation we provided up here. 
So between 0.1 and 0.29 is a small effect, between 0.3 and 0.9 is a moderate effect, and anything larger than 0.5 is a large. I think I, I meant to say between 0.3 and 0.49 is a moderate. Uh, so anything larger than a 0.5 is a large effect. We have right here, we have a first a significant association and we have a large a large effect, a large statistical effect. Um, then the third thing you look at is the sign of this correlation coefficient. Is it positive or is it negative? If it's positive, then that means you have a direct association, meaning as one variable increases in value, the second variable also tends to increase. A negative correlation, as we do have here, is a inverse association. So as one variable increases, the second tends to decrease, which we can see in the scatter plot. And it is intuitive. You know, the more horsepower you have in a car, typically the lower mileage you are going to have. Okay, so the non-parametric version of this would be a Spearman's correlation. That is done in the same menu here. However, to do a Spearman correlation, usually you need to have an ordinal variable. What I've done here is I have mileage, actual mileage of the car, but next to it, this is an ordinal version of the mileage where we have different cutoffs. So we don't have the specific value, but we have different cutoffs. Uh, so 10.4 falls between 10 and 15, 15.2 15 falls between 15.1 and 20, and so forth. So this is where you would do a Spearman correlation. Again, you just select, you select your variables of interest, mileage, ordinal, and horsepower. And I'm assuming we'll see a similar relationship here. But yeah, so right away we do see that there's a negative trend. Again, we have a significant association. We have a correlation coefficient that is large. And we have a negative association, meaning that as mileage increases, horsepower tends to decrease. Vice versa is also true. So as horsepower increases, mileage tends to decrease. That's the big thing about correlations is they are two-way relationships. You don't necessarily need to have an independent and dependent variable. The relationship works both ways. Okay, so then the next possibility of a correlation that I see very frequently, I would say, is a point by serial correlation. So this is used when you have a dichotomous variable and a con continuous variable. Um, so something like a, if you have a dichotomous variable that's binary, that means, you know, gender, if it's just male and female, a yes or no response on a survey, or maybe passing and failing of an exam, those are binary or dichotomous. In the spreadsheet here, I do have a binary. We have two binaries actually. So transmission type, does the car use a manual or automatic transmission? Again, for this, you go to analyses, then point by serial correlation. You input the binary factor first, the transmission type, and then you select the mileage. Let's do the same examination. Mm -hmm. And so the same cutoff supply, uh, and the same interpretations, I should say, apply, uh, but there are different cutoffs for a point by serial. So 0.1 is a small, 0.24 is a moderate, 0.37 is a large effect. So again, we see a significant association. We do have a positive and strong correlation coefficient, meaning that as mileage, or I should say that uh, manual cars, is what this means, is manual transmission cars tend to have higher mileage compared to automatic cars. Okay, another way you could do this, you know, I don't always love doing point by serial correlations because it doesn't give you the specificity as to which transmission has higher mileage. It tells you the direction, but it doesn't give you the specificity. 
I would instead do an independent t-test for this. So an independent sample t-test with the same variables. You just do mileage and you do transmission type. This is a better option in my opinion because it is going to give you the actual mileage for each group. So you can see for one, we have significance again. The p-values will always align between a point by serial and an independent t-test. So an independent t-test is used when you have a continuous dependent variable, as we do in mileage, and you're comparing it for differences between two groups. We can see specifically for automatic, what was the mileage? And then for manual transmission, what was the mileage? We can see that you know, for manual, it's quite a bit higher than automatic. Okay. Or the non-parametric alternative. So if you have a dichotomous variable and an ordinal variable, there's not really a non-parametric equivalent to this for a point by serial. Instead, you should shift to a main Whitney test. Okay, so this tests for differences being the key word, not really relationship or association. This is looking at differences in an ordinal variable by a dichotomous variable. Okay. Then the next family we have would be a relationship between two categories, uh, two categorical factors or two categorical variables. This is when you do a chi-square test of independence. So an example of this would be, is there a significant association between the transmission type of the car and the engine type? And so first you have to check in the data. Do I have two categorical variables? Yes, I do. So they need to be nominal. Nominal means categorical. Transmission and engine type. So I can go to analyses and non-parametrics. I-square test is considered to be a non-parametric because you don't need to have a normal distribution to run this. So then you select variables from the data set and we'll put engine type and we will put transmission type. And what this will give you is a cross tabulation is what it's called, which shows you the frequencies between your two variables. So this number right here means we had 12 automatic cars that were also V-shaped for the engine. Uh, then we had seven automatic that were straight engine and so forth for manual six and seven were the frequencies for V-shaped and straight engines. And <clears throat> very much like before, you look at the p-value and that tells you if you have a significant association between these two variables. And we don't. Uh, this is greater than 0 0.05, meaning that we don't have evidence of a statistically significant relationship between transmission and engine type. So yeah, uh, meaning that you know it doesn't really matter what type of transmission the car has, it, it doesn't associate with having a specific engine. Okay, so that pretty much covers the three or four different types of correlations. The most important thing is figuring out what level of measurement you're using for the variables. Is it ordinal, is it nominal, or is it continuous? That will almost immediately point you in the right direction of what test to use. Um, then you should check for the assumption of normality. That's something I didn't really show in Intellectus, but you can do that here. Um, the most, there's many ways to check for normality. You can do it with visual interpretation of the scatter plot, uh, but you can also do it with tests like a Shapiro Wilk test or a Komogorov Smirnov test. Uh, and then once you've figured out the assumptions, you can pinpoint the specific analysis to address your research questions, and then use intellect statistics or SBSS or STATA uh, to analyze your data and present the interpretations. Okay, so I'll now open up the panel. If we have any questions, you can type them into the chat box or you can raise your hand.
And you can see all the contact information here. I, I do see some people joined a little bit into the webinar. Uh, we'll be sending everyone a copy of the presentation in addition to the PowerPoint. Um, you can see all the different parts of the dissertation that we assist with here. Uh, so you can give us a call at 727-442-4290. Do we have any questions pertaining to correlations or the software? Any questions? All right, it looks like we do have a question from Francisco. Hey, Francisco, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Good, uh, what's your question? Do we have something really small let's say we've got two files with mm -hmm. n equals 16 and one and n equal 12 in the other file or 10. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you go about deciding which system to use or what uh, model to use to analyze the data so the sample size it depends what analysis or what your research questions are but every analysis has a different sample size target and we actually have that in the software here. Uh, it's a power analysis. Mm -hmm. um, so today we were doing correlations and for a Pearson correlation, depends what effect size you anticipate for your research, but you can see that if you anticipate a large effect, you need 26 cases. If you do a medium, 82 cases and a small effect, which I rarely see, you need a large sample, um, but the takeaway is that you should still run your analysis, but you should interpret with caution. That's the big thing. It's going to reduce your power because the, the sample size is so small, but you can still run it. Um, you just have to be cautious in the interpretation. And that should be acknowledged in the final chapter. If you're doing a dissertation or a thesis, the final chapter usually has a limitation section. <clears throat> and you would just acknowledge that the sample size was a limitation for running these analyses. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Do you have any other questions? Okay, does anyone else have any questions? I did see another hand was raised for a second. There we go. Hey, Jennifer. I put my question in the chat, but I was asking if uh, in Terecta statistics, the software I can self teach myself or you guys have tutorials? Uh, we have both. Uh, we have software tutorials in here. So you can check out the knowledge center in here. We have how to videos on okay. how this is on our company website. Uh, I'll put this in the chat box. Okay. Yeah, you can self-teach yourself, but we also do webinars every day of the week uh, okay. where participants can join, up to six people can join per day, and we will help each participant one-on-one -on -one, okay. uh, if you have any questions about the software. So how do I get to register for those webinars? Uh, if you just go on the website, yeah, okay. I'm, putting, I'm putting it in the chat. Right, was there a reason well. I was asked to unmute? Oh, I, I think I accidentally unmuted you instead of Jennifer. My apologies. Okay. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Yeah, and then the other question, uh, the results you present, does the software, software does the write-up or it was you who made the write-up? That right. The software, all this that we did was just by clicking and selecting correlations, and it's automatically going to generate this APA write up for you. Wow. Um, yeah, it's done quickly, it's done efficiently. You can download the document at the bottom right here. So once okay. you download the document, this is going to put it into Microsoft Word 
uh, at which point you can make edits, you know, put it into your school's template. Okay. And yeah, you might have to shift things around. Uh, these citations are pretty common, so you want to try and rephrase things when you can. I see. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, do we have any other questions? Francisco, did you raise your hand again? I, I'm not yes. sure. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, one thing that uh, I'm sure that not only me, but other people in the call would like to know is uh, how much will you charge the, for, for this? All, uh, there's a seven day free trial, first of all, uh, for using the software. Um, and then I believe it's $100 for a month. Um, so it's a really good deal. It's going to save you money versus using something like SPSS, which is quite an expensive package. But yeah, it's very cost efficient. Mm -hmm. And can you help us to define what are the best things to, what are the best models to use for this called the relations of what type of analysis we should do? Yeah. Uh, you can do that a few ways. You can look in the decision tree over here. So this is going to kind of guide you towards the ideal analysis to run. Okay, so you'll see, you know, if you have a scale dependent variable, you should run a linear regression. Um, and you can answer these questions at the top. What is your goal? I want to predict an outcome. Is the outcome scale, nominal, ordinal? Say it's nominal. Does it have more than two levels? So it's going to take you towards the correct approach of a logistic regression. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, actually, Juan, you're correct. It's $59 a month. So I misspoke. Uh, I think we're doing a discount. So it's $59 a month, even better. So it's a lot cheaper than the alternatives. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. But yeah, if you also have questions about you know, what model or based on your research questions, what you're trying to run, then you can set up a consultation with one of our specialists. That's also an option. So there are many ways that we can help you out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. you're welcome. Okay, this is Jennifer again. So do you work with only dissertations or if I'm working on a paper and I need help with analysis, I can work with you? Yes, we do both. Uh, oh. So we do individual papers if you're in a class, and we also help with dissertations. Okay, thank you. Yes, I go to the website and do the registration and all those things. Yes, and then oh. we'll schedule you with a, a specialist, a free consultation. Sierra just put the hyperlink in the chat box. Oh, Madam Jennifer. Okay. Okay, do we have any other questions? All right, well, thanks for joining everyone. Uh, we do about eight of these webinars a month. Uh, so come join us for the future meetings and schedule a consultation if you have any further questions. <clears throat> have a great day.